So here we have our Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Notes for you guys to peruse at your leisure. Um, I am going to work out example problems and whatnot, so it is in your best interest to, once we get to an example problem, pause it, try to work it out on your own, uh, and then hit play to see if you've, get it right, if you've done it right. Okay, so first of all, what is Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures? Obviously, proposed by John Dalton. If you remember way back when we did atomic theory, it's the same guy. Um, and key thing is it applies only in the absence of a chemical reaction. If there is a chemical reaction going on, his law does not apply. Um, volume and temperature have to stay the same. And the pressure that each gas exerts, it doesn't matter what the other pressures are of the other gases. Because if you remember from uh, the kinetic molecular theory, Gases don't interact with one another. They bump into each other and then keep on going. And so it doesn't matter if all of the gas particles are oxygen or if it's a mixture of oxygen particles and nitrogen particles. It doesn't matter. So this is his actual law. states that the total pressure of a mixture of, gas, of, a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of each of the pressures of the component gases. Doesn't matter how many different gases you have, the pressure of each individual gas will add up to make the total pressure. So it kind of looks like this, where the total pressure is equal to the pressure of gas one, plus the pressure of gas two, plus the pressure of gas three, plus the pressures of whatever other gases um, are in here. And partial pressure is just defined as the pressure of each gas that's in the mixture. So this is the total pressure, and each of these are partial pressures. So why just a big, long addition problem? Why something so simple? Well, each particle of each gas has an equal chance of hitting the wall, so they all contribute to the pressure. Um, and the pressure of each gas, it doesn't matter what other gases are in there. Each gas is just going to do its own thing. Uh, and because the total pressure is the result of the total number of collisions per area, it doesn't matter what the identity of the gas is. And remember, no chemical reaction can be happening. If there is a chemical reaction going on, this does not apply. So here's a cute little picture. We have this blue gas under two little weights of pressure and we have this red gas under five little weights of pressure. Well you put the two of them together and you get this thing. The gases do not interact with each other other than to you know bounce off of each other and keep going but their pressures add up which is why we have seven little weights on here. So what's the point? Why do we have to learn this? Well collecting a gas that's coming off of a reaction is much easier if you can trap it in a liquid um, because this way we know that there's no air already in this substance um, the liquid can be pushed out it literally like this container whatever is open down here so the liquid gets pushed out by the gas coming in and this is in a lab in a lab, high school lab, college lab, the easiest way to collect a gas. And this is how we will collect all of our gases in the next couple of labs. Uh, <clears throat> and this is just explaining how it works. Uh, the thing is, once this gas bubbles up through the water, it's gonna pick up a couple of water molecules on its way. And some of the water right here at the surface is going to evaporate. And so what you actually have is a mixture of the gas you want plus just a little teeny, teeny, tiny bit of water vapor. It's not that much, and it's not going to react with anything. It's not going to affect your, you know, whatever it is that you want to do with this gas. Um, but it is there, and so we have to take it into consideration. And this is the formula that we'll use where the total pressure is equal to the pressure of whatever gas we want plus the pressure of the water, partial pressure of each of the two gases that's contained in this mixture. The total pressure is going to be whatever the atmospheric pressure is for that particular day. Um, usually we are able to look that up and the units 
if we look it up on the Weather Channel, I know the units are inches of mercury, so we'll have to convert that to a unit that we can use in the lab. But the total pressure is always going to be equal to the atmospheric pressure. And then the pressure of the water, the partial pressure of water, is going to be set for a certain temperature. So this is almost a constant. And every single chemistry book has a water vapor pressure table at the back. Ours happens to be on page 899, and you'll want to know this. Um, and it lists for temperatures ranging from 0 degrees Celsius all the way up to 100 degrees Celsius what the pressure of water vapor is going to be at that temperature. So the temperature in our reactions is always going to be room temperature ranging from as low as 21 degrees Celsius all the way up to, I think the highest our lab has ever gotten is 24 degrees Celsius, um, more towards the summer. So it'll range in between there and all of these temperatures are listed on the water vapor pressure table. So you will just look this number up. This is according to the weather channel, whatever the atmospheric pressure is for our particular day. And so this is what we're actually going to be solving for. So here's our example. We are doing this exact same experiment right here. We're going to collect the oxygen gas that comes off of this reaction of potassium chlorate. The manganese dioxide here, that's just a catalyst. Um, so we're decomposing potassium chlorate, which by the way, this was the, uh, the screaming candy, screaming gummy bear reaction. I didn't use a gummy bear this year, but the, the test tube with the candy that, you know, kind of shot out. So it's collected by water displacement. The barometric pressure and the temperature during the experiment were 731 torr and 20 degrees Celsius. we got a cold lab room here. What was the partial pressure of the oxygen collected? Well, if you remember your formula, total pressure is equal to the pressure of our gas, which in this case is oxygen, so I'm going to put the pressure of O2, plus our water vapor because it was collected by water displacement, so the pressure of the water. Well, we know our total pressure is 731 torr. That's Pt. P of O2, that's what is the partial pressure, so that's our X, and then the P of the H2O, we actually need to look that up. So if you look on page 899 and look under 20 degrees Celsius, we have two units that we can choose from, millimeters of mercury and KPAs. Well, if you remember, tor and millimeters of mercury are the exact same thing. So I'm going to use millimeters of mercury. So the partial pressure of water at 20 degrees Celsius is 17.5 tor. <clears throat> and again, I found this number on page 899. So, rearrange this for the partial pressure of oxygen. And you just basically get that the total pressure minus the pressure of the water. So plug that in, 731 minus 17.5. And you get 731 minus 17.5. Sorry, I pushed the wrong button. Uh, 713.5. But whenever you're adding and subtracting, you are only allowed as many sig figs after the decimal as the guy with the fewest decimal places. And the guy with the fewest decimal places is this guy with none. So this actually needs to be 714 and the units tor. And there you go. <clears throat> Next example. Find the partial pressures of two mixed gases if the overall pressure is 790 millimeters of mercury. And then they tell us the percent by volume of A is 20% and B is 80%. So you do exactly what you think you're supposed to do. Uh, if A is 20%, well, then it's 20% of this. So you just take 790 and multiply that by 0.2. Because when you take 20% and convert it to an actual number, you just keep the decimal back two places. And so the partial pressure of A is going to be 158, but we're only allowed two sig figs, so we have to say that this is actually 160 millimeters of mercury. Oops. Let's not put A right here. And then for B, we do the exact same thing. 790, except instead of times 0.2, we're going to multiply it by 0.8. 
and so that's going to be 632 or incorrect sig figs just 630 and you'll notice if you add the two of these up the partial pressure of A plus the partial pressure of B you get the total pressure